You're listening to Talk the Talk with Bill Newman and Buzz Eisenberg. When I read about your book, Raul Colon, uh, I was incredibly moved. And to talk to us about it is Rich Michelson. And what we're going to talk about is this incredible book and the images that it contains, but also the fact that it's been, take a deep breath, banned in Florida. Well, Buzz, uh, it's good to be here, and hi, Bill, from long distance. Um, I am absolutely thrilled that my good friend Raul Colon has joined us today. Uh, Raul has been a major presence in uh, our Michelson galleries for many years. I'm happy to say that he and I did a book together as well, and uh, a book about Martin Luther King. Uh, so you mentioned that, uh, and uh, we right now have a small exhibit up of Raul's uh, in the gallery, and that includes some original work from his book, Roberto Clemente, Pride of the Pittsburgh Pirates, which was published, what did we just uh, ascertain? 2000, it was 2005. 2005, uh, and, but, uh, but we've seen a spike in sales recently, Raul, <laughs> so lunch is on I you um, today, <laughs> and we've seen a spike in sales uh, because uh, this book was recently banned in Florida, and um, along with Buzz, I should say, a book on Hank Aaron. Um, another children's book. These are books that are aimed towards about uh, second through fourth grades. Um, and when I first heard that this book was banned, um, I was astounded. I read it again, and I couldn't figure out what the problem was. Uh, I read through it a few times. The book is by Jonah Winter. It is uh, illustrated by Raul Colon. I'll hold, off, I'll hold up one of your beautiful illustrations. People can come to the gallery and see it. And it took me a few times reading through uh, to realize why they would have banned this. And I'm just going to read like two lines here, which is basically it, folks. Um, there was something that would have made Roberta's joy a little sweeter. This is after he hits a home run. As much as fans loved him, the newspaper writers did not. When Roberta was in such pain he couldn't play, they called him lazy. They mocked his Spanish accent, and when Roberta got angry, the white newsman called him a Latino hothead. So, um, boy, uh, is that, that's something that uh, obviously third and fourth graders should not be, um, should not be uh, you know, come across um, to find out that life is not perfect. Uh, so when you got this book and were told to illustrate it, uh, did you see anything in it that was political that you were tell us about how this came about to you well um as usual um illustrators who illustrate our children's books uh, the editor usually calls you and sent or sends you a manuscript and obviously uh and short sums of my edit editor for this book and she sent me the uh, manuscript that jonah winter who's the writer of this uh story uh had submitted to her and you know, she almost knew that I was going to say yes to this. <laughs> so, uh, because I, when you were growing up in Puerto Rico, uh, did you know Clemente? I saw him play. You saw I him? saw him play live, and um, uh, I had I lived in the states, but uh, we had moved to Puerto Rico, so I could see him in winter ball over there. He he always played winter ball a lot of many times, and I could see him close up too. So it was <laughs> really a, a treat. He was the enemy, though, because uh, I was on uh, the uh, the other um, star that I supported was Cepeda, mm -hmm. who was on the, the opposite team. Orlando Cepeda. <laughs> Orlando Cepeda. And uh, so I like Cepeda. I didn't want Clemente to beat my team. But, <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, he was a great player. So I saw him play. I always loved the way he played. And it was almost funny the way he ran bases. It was. He looked a lot like Jackie Robinson. I've seen some film of Jackie Robinson uh, playing and running. And uh, he almost ran like him, but he had a style that it was like somebody well, the wrote. other thing that famously what he did is after he swung, he already was in motion running. Exactly. Oh. It, it, there was no break between no the break. swing and the taking off was, of first base. He was fast. He could steal. Well, he was a five-tool player. He could steal bases. He could hit home runs if he wanted. He could hit, um, you know, for average, which he won four batting titles. So he and was a great player. And the way he played the outfield. The outfield and the right arm, his, I mean his arm, which in the book you will learn he 
was, well, I learned it doing research. He used to throw the javelin for the um, a team, for the Olympic team, Puerto Rican Olympic team. So he, he had, had a, a great arm, and cannon, cannon and accurate. Because yeah. other players have had great arms. His was right there, always on home plate. If he threw the home plate or a third base, so when you got out. this book, did you see so, anything controversial about it? Well, that's the thing. I all I thought of was th- his greatness, and obviously I knew he went through struggles, like anybody um, in those days did, in ball players or anybody. And he was. Yeah, I grew up in the, during the civil rights movement, so right. I knew things like this happened. So that was part of the uh, deal. That's part of uh, American history. Wow, I mean that's what it is. It's American history, and he was part of it. He's an American who went through that. And um, that's all I saw, the, the beauty of him playing and the fact that he was a hero, that he faced all any adversities and that he had to humble himself also. And uh, it, it was it. That was a story. It was a positive thing for children to see. And, and I've gotten letters and uh, awards and everything uh, concerning the book and the illustrations mm-hmm. and the story by Jonah, like I said, because our children and teachers have appreciated. And for the first 15 and plus years this was out, did you get any negative comments? Did anybody, I mean, was this totally out of the blue to find out this children's book is suddenly banned? Uh, yes, that was crazy. That was a crazy thing. And... Um, but it, not, it was a positive book all, all the way around. Like I said, um, children even had clubs and things like that that I remember based on the book. And they, they did activities mm-hmm. through all those years. And the fact that the book still is selling, you know, after all these years, uh, children's books uh, don't necessarily stick around forever. They have to be classics. So it, it's, it shows that it still resonates today. Mm-hmm. It resonates. And Clemente, of course, was known f- um, not only for his baseball prowess, but for his good works, giving back to the community. Um, and, in fact, he died on such a mission. Right, and in the book, it's in the book also. Right. It's a children's book, but, you know, it doesn't hide from the fact that he died trying to help other people. And there's a Roberto Clemente Award right now in, in the major leagues, which is a major award for any player who, uh, you know, has the kind of... Spirit that he had, you know, with with charity and helping others, so you can win an award for that, and it's in his name. Mm-hmm. So it's absolutely great. I do want to invite the local audience uh, to come to our Muskelson Galleries. We have a wonderful exhibit of your work out yet. They can see the Roberto Clemente piece. They can see many of your other books. Uh, they can see the work from the book we did together, as good as anybody. Martin Luther King and Abraham Joshua Heschel's Amazing March Towards Freedom, because. Those pieces were all purchased not that long ago uh, by George Lucas. The name rings a bell for his new museum, which he's opening up. Um, And uh, you'll be able to go there and see it. Also, for those people who summer on Martha's Vineyard, you'll be able to see an exhibit of Raul's this summer in July at the um, Featherstone Center for the Arts, where there will be an exhibit of Latino illustrators. Um, Mention a couple of your other books for people to get what's what's new what's uh what's out there well um i like them to um remember this uh that um the book that um uh i've i've actually illustrated there are two books draw and imagine which are two of wordless the, picture books two of the classics, of, uh, classics of children's literature i think everybody will say that uh they're books you both wrote even though they're wordless and uh, illustrated. Raul, it's absolutely a pleasure to have you here. Welcome to Northampton. We're As it is for you, today. Rich Michelson. So for those of you who have been listening in the morning, thank you so much for spending your time with us. For those who are listening in the afternoon, coming up right after the news, another full hour of Talk to Talk, which will include cool films with Larry Hott, the award-winning filmmaker, and sex educator Jane Fleischman. Thank you for joining us today. This is Talk the Talk.